Hello friends. So today's topic of discussion is the structure of DNA, and it's designed for NCERT syllabus and other higher secondary education syllabus. You can also prefer this reference as a, a higher class note also. So before start, let's uh, discuss what is the DNA and why it is there. Okay, DNA is a type of nucleic acid. These are the structures. those control the quality and quantity of a protein synthesis in organism these are present both inside and outside the nucleus okay. if we see it is present inside the nucleus also it is also present outside the nucleus like it's uh, for example in mitochondria or for example chloroplast also these biomolecules carry genes those are coded for informations okay which type of informations they carry the informations which are important for heredity which are important for inheritance which are important for expression of a gene which are important for expression of a protein so dna is actually important for all of us okay and for all the living organisms okay dna is a nucleic acid why because it has some acidic properties and it is associated mostly with nucleus okay as it is mostly associated with the nucleus that's why it is known as nucleic and it is a acid it is having a acidic property that's why it is dna that is deoxyribonucleic acid if we see these are the components of dna okay a polynucleotide chain of dna carry nucleotides as monomers okay we know all about monomers monomers are uh, <coughs> combined to produce a polymer okay so uh, like that nucleotides are behaving as monomers and those nucleotides are arranged in a chain to create a polynucleotide okay so a nucleotide comprises of pentose sugar nitrogenous base and phosphate okay pentose sugar is the ribose sugar that is present in dna in two deoxy ribose form okay if we see its structure then it has lack of a oxygen molecule at the <clears throat> two prime carbon okay if we see the nitrogenous base these are heterocyclic compounds uh, planar and relatively water insoluble aromatic molecules these are pyrimidines and purines and we have another compound that is phosphate it is an ion of phosphoric acid that is s3po4 we all know about s3po4 okay that is phosphoric acid so that phosphoric acid is present in ionic form which gives also negativity charge to the dna molecule huh. phosphate groups are found in every nucleotide as these carry negative charges frequently dna is acidic this can be attached to the 3 prime or 5 prime carbon of the pentose sugar so this one is about pyrimidine and pyrimidine sorry purine and pyrimidine okay if you see the above one is uh, the above uh, diagrams are pyrimidine and the below diagrams are purine okay pyrimidines are single ring compound nitrogen in one and three position of the benzene ring okay in dna two types of pyrimidines are found that is thymine and cytosine if you see thymine that is 5 methyl 2,4 dioxy pyrimidine okay and if you see cytosine cytosine is a 2 oxy 4 amino pyrimidine and if we see purine purine is a double ring compound that is comprises of a five membered imidazole ring and a pyrimidine ring joined at fourth and fifth position okay these are of two types one is adenine and the other other one is guanine if you see here this this diagram let me change the color for you okay this diagram is <clears throat> thymine and this diagram is cytosine okay and this diagram is adenine and this diagram is guanine okay and these are arranged like that how they are relative Uh, how they related with the hydrogen bonds also okay because we know purine and pyrimidine they combine with each other 
to produce nucleotide bonds okay sorry dna bonds okay if you see in your dna the purine and pyrimidine they behave complement to each other or complementary to each other like one purine is complementary with the other pyrimidine okay if we see adenine has a two hydrogen bond relationship with the thymine and guanine has a three hydrogen bond relationship with the cytosine okay we will discuss about it later so this one is the watson and crick model this model is based on the crystallographic studies if we see there was a x ray crystallographic studies which was developed by r franklin and watson and crick okay this model suggests dna is a helically twisted double stranded macromolecule okay dna is looks like a ladder which is twisted okay a ladder that is twisted that helical twisted double stranded macromolecule is having two strands anti parallel to each other anti parallel means if one is going upward another one is going downward clear spirally twisted dna has two types of alternative groups that is major group and minor group we will see about this in the later diagram one term of a dna has about 10 base pairs with a length of 34 armstrong if we see a dna has uh, so many terms or several terms how the terms are produced by the twisting uh, by the twisting uh, nature of the helix so one term is about uh, 34 armstrong and it contains 10 base pairs that's why each base pair has a pitch of about 3.4 armstrong the sugars are joined together by phosphate groups that form phosphodiester bonds between the third and fifth carbon atom of adjacent sugar ring if we see there are phosphate group and those phosphate group they attach to the three prime carbon also and they attach to the five prime carbon also okay five prime carbon and three three prime carbon they are from sugar group and that phosphate group is attached to them with phosphodiester bonds okay glycosidic bond in dna refers to the nitrogen and carbon linkage between the nine prime nitrogen of purine base or the one prime nitrogen of the pyrimidine base to the one prime carbon of the sugar group okay if we see there are another bonds also uh, those are like a glycosidic bond and a hydrogen bond we have already discussed about the hydrogen bond let's see about the glycosidic bond the glycosidic bond is a bond that that actually joins a sugar molecule to other compounds okay here in dna this sugar molecule joined with the nitrogenous bases okay so that dna sorry in dna that sugar combine with the nitrogenous base with a glycosidic bond okay that glycosidic bond is having a linkage between nine prime nitrogen of the purine base with the one prime carbon of the sugar group if if the bond is between purine and sugar but if the bond is between pyrimidine and sugar then the pyrimidine having one prime nitrogen is bonded with the one prime carbon of the sugar group those create the glycosidic bond okay the two strands are held together by weak hydrogen bonds the two strands are complementary as the purine tie opposite to the pyrimidines okay if we see a purine is actually complementary with the pyrimidine so adenine forms two hydrogen bonds with the thymine and cytosine forms three hydrogen bond with the guanine okay and purine pyrimidine pairing is about 20 armstrong thick that means the diameter of the dna is 20 armstrong thin okay if we see the diagram here okay this uh, this diagram is taken from the uh, molecular biology books by james t watson itself okay who was actually the pioneer inventor of the structure uh, if we see here this uh, in the left side this one is the diagram of the dna molecule okay if you see this one is the uh, diameter that is 20 armstrong this one is a torn which is having 10 base pair 
and the length is 34 armstrong okay and each base is having a pitch of 3.4 armstrong okay that's the clear point about a physical property of a dna if you see there are major groups okay this one is a major group and this one is the minor group okay this major group and minor group they are also formed due to the twisting nature of the dna and they are also having some sort of length if you see the minor group is having 12 armstrong length and the major group is of 22 armstrong length okay but all these structures they are actually associated with the b dna okay if you see there are so many types of dna like a dna b dna z dna so the main important structure is b dna that is proposed by james t watson if it undergoes dehydration then it produces a, a form of dna okay and the another form of dna that is a zigzag form of dna which is also known as z dna okay so if you see in the next slide this one is the adenine and thymine bonding okay if you see adenine and thymine they have nitrogen bonds sorry hydrogen bonds in between nitrogen and oxygen and hydrogens okay in two sides okay but if you see the guanine and cytosine bond they have three hydrogen bonds each are with having nitrogen hydrogen nitrogen uh, sorry uh, nitrogen hydrogen and oxygen they are also continuing the hydrogen bond with nitrogen hydrogen and oxygen but they are actually bonding at three region okay but if we see adenine and thymine they are actually bonding at two regions okay here are some special characters of dna if you see dna is composed of a polynucleotide chain two strands of the double helix are wound around each other uh, in an anti parallel orientation and have complementary sequences okay if you see the two strands they are actually running anti parallel to each other okay if one is moving upward the other one is moving downward how can you determine the direction of the dna okay it can be determined by the pentose sugar itself if the oxygen bond is uh, moving upward then the dna is upward if the oxygen bond is downward sorry the oxygen of the pentose sugar is downward then the dna runs downward okay double helix is stabilized by base pairing and base stacking if you see base can flip out from the dna double helix dna is usually right handed double helix but the z dna is a left handed dna double helix double helix has a major and minor groups <clears throat> major group is rich in chemical informations whereas minor groups lack those chemical informations double helix exists in multiple conformations dna sometimes can form a left handed helix dna can denature and reassociate also some dna molecule are circular okay circular dna you can find in plasmids which are present in bacteria there are uh, these are the types of dna if you see there are a dna there are b dna and there are z dna okay the a dna is coiling right handedly b dna is also right handedly but the z dna is left handed okay if you see the pitch of a helix stone that is 28 armstrong in a dna which is in a uh, what uh, dehydration form the b dna is having a pitch of a 34 armstrong helix stone and if you see the z dna it is having a 45 armstrong helix stone if you see mean base pair per turn is 11 in a dna 10 in b dna and 12 in z dna and the rise per base pair is 2.3 armstrong in a dna 3.4 armstrong in b dna and 3.8 armstrong in z dna and diameter is 26 armstrong in a dna 20 armstrong in b dna and 18 armstrong in z dna if you see these properties these are like this if this one is a dna let me draw it for you
if this one is a structure of a dna molecule okay then these are considered as one term okay and this one term is about 34 armstrong in b dna okay 28 armstrong in a dna and 45 armstrong in z dna if you see the main base pair that is 11 10 and 12 respectively in a b and z you can see a dna is having 11 base pair in between these one term okay if you see b dna that b dna is having 10 base pair and if you see z dna z dna is actually having 12 base pair okay and that mean base pair is like this one base pair is having a pitch of 3.4 armstrong in b dna 2.3 armstrong in a dna and 3.8 armstrong in z dna and if you see the diameter the diameter is actually just this property okay diameter is actually this property this one is 20 armstrong in b dna 26 armstrong in a dna and 18 armstrong in z dna if you see some factors affecting dna stability okay what why actually dna stability is important this stability is important because it prevents the two DNA strands from breaking apart spontaneously and plays an important role in the way DNA is copied. Okay, if we see in our body, our cell is duplicating every day. Okay, our cell is dividing every day by the process of mitosis and meiosis. Okay, so for that, the DNA needs to be copied. Apart from that, the DNA needs to be stay at a stable form because it is negatively charged and it is a chemical also which is controlling our cell and uh, uh, by the virtue of that it is controlling our body also so it needs to be stable okay and there are some stability factors which actually affect its stability okay if you see those factors these are like hydrogen bonding base stacking and ionic interaction if you see hydrogen bonding it contributes a little to the stability. Base stacking interaction, that is base pair stuck together through Van der Waal equation or Van der Waal force of attraction, it contributes significantly to the overall stability. And if you see ionic interaction, arrays of negative charges of a phosphate group along the strands repel each other to keep the complementary backbone up. If we see one strand is negatively charged, the other one is also negatively charged. So both the negatively charged strand, they repel each other. That's why they maintain a particular position. Okay. And their particular position is actually held together via a hydrogen bond. Clear? Negative charges are on the exterior surface to minimize the repulsive effect. So the repulsive effect is also minimized due to the negatively charged ions are present at the outside of the money okay if you see divalent cations like magnesium 2 plus bind to these anionic phosphates to seal them from one another if you see those negative charges, they are actually uh, maintained stability due to additional binding of magnesium 2 plus cations okay so these are all about dna i hope you understand if you don't understand any points you can pause it you can comment below in the comment section that's why i can clear it clear you uh, about those points also okay thank you for today's class